Hey, there are spoilers in this video for basically everything that's been released in A Song of Ice and Fire, you've been warned. Have you been waiting for the winds of winter? Of course you have, everyone and their dog has been waiting for this book. People have been going insane. No fandom has lost their collective minds waiting for a new release like this since the Israelites waited 40 years in the desert for the Ten Commandments. Moses, please, we're worshiping calves now. Do I have any idea when the next book is going to get here? No, I have no freaking clue, but besides that, there is a post recently on the A Song of Ice and Fire subreddit by Marcus Quintus, who stated that people who don't like dance will probably not like wins. Dance, of course, is the fifth book in the series. Marcus goes into detail about how the last two books are rather expansive, and there are a bunch of side plots, so if you didn't like those, then you're probably not going to like wins, and people hoping for a repeat more of the third book are going to be in for a bit of a disappointment. But we need to have a talk, fandom, because there is a big issue at play here, and it's something that doesn't get enough airtime as probably it deserves. So hold on to your bubble wrap, you special snowflake, because we're going to take a very deep mathematical dive into a major problem facing the Winds of Winter. This problem, of course, is the title of this video. It's how can the Winds of Winter fit into the Winds of Winter? You might be asking, why is this an issue? Well, as you probably know, the series started out in 96 with a Game of Thrones, and then was followed up by a Clash of Kings, and then a Storm of Swords. And then there was a big wait for the fourth book in the series called A Dance with Dragons. But this book didn't actually come out, at least not right away. It was followed up to a sequel of A Storm of Swords of half of the story called A Feast for Crows, which was then followed up six years later by A Dance with Dragons, which was the sequel to the other half of A Storm of Swords. So the obvious question here now is how can you take these two books and then condense them down into a sequel that only spans the breadth of a single book? Well, back in 2012, in an online interview, web chat, a fan asked George, really looking forward to the next installment, but how are you going to finish it, A Song of Ice and Fire, in just two books? George responded, Two big books, 1,500 manuscript pages each. That's 3,000 pages. I think I have a good shot. So George was targeting The Winds of Winter to be 1,500 manuscript pages. Then another question came up on George's not a blog just in this April by some Yahoo named Jeff who asks, This question might be painful, but I'll ask it anyways. Has there been any thought of publishing wins in similar fashion, as Fire and Blood in two volumes. George responded, Some of my publishers have suggested breaking up wins as we did with Feast and Dance. I am resisting that notion. So George here didn't give any indication that he's looking to break the Winds of Winter out beyond just a single book, so it seems like the 1500 manuscript page limit is still on. And this is because 1,500 manuscript pages are the maximum publishable amount. Once you go beyond that, then Random House's Gutenberg printing presses, they just kind of like, they just like die. And like the glue starts on stick and the pages start falling out and they just get everywhere. However, for our purposes, manuscript pages are rather difficult to analyze because the books are no longer in manuscript page form once they get published between the US hardback and the US paperback and the UK hardback, the UK paperback. Some of them are in multiple volumes. The point is that the manuscript pages, once we get them, change, and it's really hard to look at them. We don't have exact counts. So for our purposes on trying to gauge how long the Winds of Winter is going to be, it's easier if we focus on word count because A, it's a more precise figure, and B, we also have the precise counts for every single book. Some website that I googled says that one manuscript page equals between 250 to 300 words, and this appears to be accurate. Adam Worthead on his blog has a page count for A Storm of Swords of 1530 manuscript pages, and it ends with dragons at about 1500. And these roughly come out to about 280 words per page. So if we look at an upper limit for the Winds of Winter, it's stretched to 285 words per page to compensate for the maps at the beginning and the appendix at the end. That would mean it would be roughly equal to about 430,000 words. So I went online to look for one of those great resources that an intrepid fan had done that counted every single word in every chapter, but it turns out there wasn't one, so I had to do it all myself. For disclosure's sake, no, I didn't sit there and count every single word in the series, but what I did do is I loaded up all the ebooks in a program called Caliber, and then I split them apart into different word docs containing just the chapter titles and also the main body of text, so no pages, no superfluous stuff that would throw it off. 
and then I used a program called Find Count for every single chapter, including the sample chapters, to get the exact word counts for an apples to apples comparison between all the books. What does this mean? It means I'm a huge nerd, but also we have really great data. Looking at the word count of the first five books, we have a Game of Thrones at about 298,000 words, followed up by a Clash of Kings at roughly 325,000 words. Then there was a big jump by about 100,000 up to 424,000 words for A Storm of Swords. And then the big wait started to kick in, where A Feast for Crows came out that was about 300,000 words, which was very similar to the first book in the series, which was followed up by Dance with Dragons, which was very close in count at 422,000 to A Storm of Swords at its 424,000. However, as we've already discussed, these two books, while they are separate and they have their own thematic stories, really they're both the sequel to A Storm of Swords, and there are also, like, several different combined reading orders that you can get out in the fandom, like the Boiled Leather Order or the Feast with Dragons Order. So what we're going to do is we're going to look, actually, at the count of these two books as a single book, as it was originally intended if George could have bound it all into a single volume. And now, of course, we have a book that is 723,000 words, well over any other book in the series. So let's look at this as a projection of what it would take to follow up that book with its own sequel. The first up that we're going to look at is going to be the high band count, the high projection, taking the maximum number of chapters that a character had in any book and then projecting it that that will be the number of chapters that they will eventually have in The Winds of Winter. Obviously, we're also going to have to take out the dead characters because they won't be having chapters anymore. So, when we look at the high projection, we get 136 chapters, which is well over the length of A Storm of Swords. And while 136 might appear to be somehow manageable, you also have to pay attention to the bottom row on this chart, which lists the average words per chapter. As you can see, George has been steadily increasing the word count for each book. So if we project that forward for The Winds of Winter, that original 4,000 average words per chapter would have grown to about 6,600 words. Which, when we multiply that 6,600 words by 136 for the projected chapter count, that comes out to about 900,000 words over double the length of A Storm of Swords or A Dance with Dragons. Now, before you get too scared, remember, this is the high projection. This is the largest that we could imagine the sequel could be. So let's look at the low projection, taking the lowest number of chapters that a character has had since they've been introduced. Bear in mind, we do have to include a chapter there for Theon, because we know he has already a chapter in The Winds of Winter. So let's look at it. Even looking at the low band, we get 92 chapters, which comes out to about 609,000 words, which given George's current word count per chapter projection, would be still about 44% too big for the book. If we really want to see what the Winds of Winter would look like if it fit into a single book, we're going to have to do a manual projection of it. Trying to guess the number of chapters that a character would have to have while doing a very conservative look at it to try and get that chapter count down. Now this is going to be very subjective, and you're going to disagree with some of these, but put that aside for the moment while we go ahead and we dive down into what it would take to fit it into 430,000 words to get it to fit the length of A Storm of Swords. Let's go at it one at a time. So for Danny, I'm not sure you can go all the way down to five chapters because she has a lot of room to cover, at least geographically. She's right now up in the Dothraki Sea, so you presume she's going to need probably at least two chapters there, then at least one in Marine, maybe one in Volantis, maybe one in Pentos, maybe one in Karth, before getting back all the way to Dragonstone. So six chapters would probably be enough to do that, but there isn't much more that you can do with her to get that chapter count down. Tyrion, if you don't know, is George's favorite character. He writes a lot for Tyrion. The lowest amount that he's ever had in a book was nine chapters. I think you have to try and get that down to about eight. You have to go below that amount. And, you know, there are some ways that this works out because you can have multiple POVs in Marine for a while and also with Danny eventually meeting him up later in the book, you probably don't need to have as many Tyrion chapters. So 8 seems like a logical projection that George might write that is also fairly conservative, at least as far as George has done so far. 
Now we get to John. I don't know if you know this, but John is still going to be alive. And so how is he going to do this? Well, he's not going to have any chapters to start the book, but I still think in order to tell the story that he wants for John, you're going to have to give him at least probably five chapters. Also, if he is the, the Song of Ice and Fire, you would imagine that he gets at least a decent chunk of the Winds of Winter, at least enough to fulfill his character. Bran, I think you could stick to about three chapters with Bran. Sansa, I think you're going to have to go up to four chapters with her at least because she's in a politically isolated area in the Vale. We know she's probably going to have at least two chapters in that area, maybe get back to Winterfell by the end of the book. Also might have other character moments with various characters throughout the story. Four, I think, is about as conservative as you can be for Sansa, but also you might think that's too low. I would kind of... Agree, but at the same time, that would put her right up there with Danny and John almost in chapter count, and she's still like not a central central character. So, I mean, I would take as many Sansa chapters as George wants to write. But again, we're trying to be conservative here. Arya, George has already stated that he has written enough chapters for her to fill a novella, so I think she's probably going to get at least five chapters in the book if he already has at least maybe three in Bravos, maybe two in Westeros. I think that's about as low as you can cut it. Prologue, there's going to be one. Epilogues, I've seen debates on this going back and forth, saying that epilogues are generally for the closing of an act. However, I still think you can have one in The Winds of Winter, and it would not be too obtuse. Obviously, it should be Patchface if they do one, but that's just a personal opinion. You can hate it if you want. Theon, three chapters. I don't know if you can go beyond that. I love Theon's chapters in Dance with Dragons, but again, he's not a central character, and we have to start cutting people down. Davos gets another three. Jamie is a bit of an enigma. I will get back to Jamie when I get to Brienne, but I think you got to make cuts here and you got to take him from eight chapters down to four. Sam, four chapters. I don't think you can do five again. Cersei, I don't think anyone thinks that she's going to get 12 chapters again, and I think you're going to have to be fairly aggressive with her. I think you're going to have to get her down to about six chapters. Brienne, you can probably drop her down again to four because with Jamie, provided both of them are going to live beyond what they have currently going on at the start of the Winds of Winter, you could combine them for a little bit and you wouldn't lose too much length there by doing fewer chapters. So it kind of works out a little bit, but again, you can't really tell the same type of Brienne, Jamie story that was in A Feast for Crows. Now you might be sitting there thinking like, this has been really aggressive. A lot of my characters are being cut down. Or you might be sitting there thinking like, this isn't too bad. Like, it can be okay. We'll get ready. Because that bubble wrap I told you to hang on to, it's about to go pop. We all love these characters, but we gotta fit it down. And I don't know if you can do more than two chapters for Aaron. We know he already has one. But you kind of have to assume that he would, yeah, die in the second one in order to fulfill the length requirements. Victarion? As much as I enjoy reading his chapters, I don't know if you can do more than two chapters with Victarion. And maybe at the end of the second, we already know he has two in The Winds of Winter. He finally sees the glory that awaits him off page in like a third chapter from another POV. Arian, we already know that she has one back at Sunspear and then one traveling through the Stormlands. So I'm not sure you can expand her story more than two additional chapters beyond that. She is going to encounter Aegon and John Connington, so maybe there's a little bit of an overlap there, but I don't think you can grow her much more than four. Asha, I mean, she might have more than three chapters. She might not. I don't know, but I'm going to just plug her in for three for her story up at Winterfell because, again, you got to be aggressive with this. Arrow Hota, he goes off and he fights Darkstar and he dies. I don't think you can do much more with Arrow Hota. I mean, you could theoretically write a whole book where he travels with Darkstar as his captive, one of them being captured by the other, and they go on a whole Riverlands journey. I don't know. But he's not your strongest character, and again, gotta be aggressive. Now we get to Barristan, who we know already has two battle chapters, so I'm just going to have to plug him in here for having one additional chapter where he dies. I don't know how much more you can do. You could give him more chapters from Tyrion, and you could have him go over and join Aegon and maybe give him another chapter there, but then you're going to have to start pulling more of these chapters away from other characters that we've already made aggressive cuts to. John Connington. 
going to give him three chapters. We have to add some meat. He might become a King's Landing point of view later on. Also, George has said that he wants to show us the Battle of Storm's End, so we're going to get probably one chapter there, and then a couple more later on, I guess. I don't know. Melisandre is probably going to pick up the story at the Wall to start off with, and she's going to receive probably the bulk of the beginning of Jon's storyline. Now, it might be four, it might be less than that, but I don't know how much Melisandre you can cut out of there if we don't have Jon as a POV to start for the book for any number of pages. So now here we are. We are down to the final page count of the manual version, which gives us 79 chapters, which if we multiply it by the 6,600 word count that George projected for the Winds of Winter, we get... 523,000 words still, which gives it about 23% over A Storm of Swords, which is too large again. Even if we remove the increased projection for George's average chapter word count and go back to the A Feast for Crows, A Dance with Dragons level of 6,073 average words per chapter, we still end up with a book that is 13% too large to fit. However, if we look at the average word count of the sample chapters for the Winds of Winter that have already been released, we get a total amount of 5,415 words, which is much closer to the average chapter word count of A Storm of Swords, which when we plug that back in, gives us a total word count of this projected version of the Winds of Winter to be about 427,000 words, enough to fit into a single 1,500 manuscript page book. So it's possible. You can, yes, in fact, fit The Winds of Winter into The Winds of Winter, but it has to be fairly aggressive into how utilitarian it is with telling everybody's story. So to go back to what Marcus had in his post at the beginning of this, which I still thought was really good, if George is trying to make this all fit into 1,500 manuscript pages, it actually kind of has to more resemble A Storm of Swords than it does the last two books. You can have it be expansive like A Feast for Crows and A Dance with Dragons, or you can have it be very utilitarian in how concise it tells its story. Now, you probably disagree with some of these, or maybe many of them, but remember, if you try and expand one of these characters here or there, then you have to take away chapters from somewhere else. Not everything can be expansive when you're trying to fit it into 1,500 manuscript pages. And yeah, I can totally understand if you're looking at this going like, this is terrible. Like, this is not how you write a book. Like, this is not the pook that I wanted. I mean, yeah, you can't write a book in a spreadsheet. I mean, like... Yes, technically you can type a book into a spreadsheet, but the, like, why would you do that? That's dumb. And yeah, chapter count and word count and all this other stuff, not how you write a book. But again, it's the ingredients that ultimately come out of it. And somehow you have to get whatever George is writing for The Winds of Winter down into this kind of format. Otherwise, you can't make the book, at least not in 1500 manuscript pages. Now, yeah, there are advantages here like characters overlapping and multiple storylines and everybody coming together a bit more. That helps a lot. And that could be one of the reasons why George has delayed the book quite a bit as it keeps getting pushed back. You know, it's, it's hard to really condense it down if that is what he is trying to do. Especially when you consider that he has 20 point of views in this book versus the 10 that were in A Storm of Swords. And if you want a bunch of asterisks to why George might not be able to manage it down to only 1,500 manuscript pages, well, you got it. Your three main characters are cut down to basically half of what they were in the last book. Two, you can go through this entire list and find a whole bunch of points for why George might want to stretch that out, especially considering things like cut characters from the show, where the show didn't even feel like they were worth including. I gotta imagine that George is gonna try and give that more gravitas to give these characters more of a story and more of an importance to the plot and do what he wants to do within his own book. You've also got chapters that are left over that were supposed to be in A Dance with Dragons where you have the battles at the beginning that were originally not Winds of Winter stuff. Coupled with that, the timelines. Some chapters that come at the end of A Dance with Dragons take place probably days, weeks, months farther into the future than the beginnings of the Winds of Winter. Kevin's epilogue signals the arrival of winter. 
However, if we look at Sansa's chapters in the Veil, vale, it doesn't appear that Re Winter has really arrived yet. So how long is it going to be before we get to that point, before her story actually tells the story of the timeline for the rest of The Winds of Winter? This manual version that I did, I also cut out a whole lot of King's Landing chapters. In every single book, King's Landing has accounted for 10 plus chapters, some even way more. Can George really go down to just six or seven if another character moves in there, etc.? And you look at the stuff here that I did with this manual projection, I killed off a whole bunch of characters towards the end that personally, if I were writing it, I'm not an author, but I would not kill them off. Especially to fit within the confines of a single book for that being the sole reason. That's bad. So I don't even know with this manual projection if George would even do that. I doubt he would. And I don't know if you've realized this, but this idea that George, like, just kills off characters a lot, that's more of an HBO show invention to, like, market the series for Game of Thrones than it is actually what George does. You look at the first three books, and who did he kill off for point of views? He killed off the parents, which is basically any Disney story ever. He just did it within the confines of the book. And one of them comes back as an undead. And then in the last two books, he killed off one character who had one chapter and another character whose whole catharsis in the series was that he was going to die. So George is not really a kill off my own characters kind of guy. Like, I don't think Aaron's going to get just two chapters. I think he'll, he'll probably get three or four. Arya could get seven. Sansa could get seven. Victorian could get four. Like, he, the list, Arion could get six, eight. It, the list goes on. So can George get it down? Mm, I don't know. It seems like a tough nut to crack if he can. Could George release The Winds of Winter in two volumes at the same time purely for binding purposes? Could do. But at the same time, it doesn't look like that is on the horizon in any kind of case at all. At least George hasn't indicated that he's looking to do that so far. So so on the one hand, you have a book that needs to be condensed down. And on the other hand, you have a story that expands in the telling. It's the human book in conflict with itself. Or something. Well, anyways, thank you for watching and listening to my long, rambling stupidity. I hope you enjoyed it, maybe. If you did, you can like this video, you can subscribe to it, I might make more, I haven't done one, at least not for myself. You can, uh, you can comment on it, tell me what version that you like, how would you, how, what, what chapters would you use for your, your book, your version of The Winds of Winter in 1500, you can make your own version. You can share this video with your friends if you don't want to have friends anymore, you can do whatever, it's your life, make the most of it. My name's been Admiral Kurd. You can become a follower of me on Twitter. You can join my cult. Twitter is a cult because you have followers. At least that's how I look at it. I don't have a big cult, but you can join it. Anyway, goodbye. Have a nice day.